I've been in, involved in education abroad in the MENA region for my entire adult life. Uh, first, of course, several experiences as a student, and for more than 12 years now uh, as both an educator, faculty member, and an administrator. Um, how do I see my role in this as a professional? Well, I think a lot of the time uh, it's, it's overused so much that it's become a cliche. Um, education abroad, uh, which is both a field and an industry, and we need to really think about both aspects of that seriously. Um, as an industry, uh, education abroad likes to talk a lot about uh, being life-changing and you know your story never being the same afterwards. And it's so overused, as I said, that it becomes a cliche. Um, the sad part about that is that, you know, I, I know from experience, not just for myself, but for pretty much everybody who works in education abroad at Amid East, that was actually true. Uh, my first experience abroad was as a 19-year-old rising junior in university, and I went to Jordan to participate for a summer in an archaeological dig. Yes, now I've come very, very far from that. Uh, I went on to become an academic specialist in the very contemporary history of the region. Um, I went on to spend uh, most of the past 20 years there, and when I wasn't there, um, I, you know, I was here in the States as a faculty member, um, you know, with students of my own. Um, and so even though I've come very far from that sort of original idea of what I wanted to do and what I wanted to be, that first trip abroad that first trip to Jordan, that one summer when I was 19 years old, was literally the gateway to everything that's happened since. So one thing I can say about what I do currently is that it's such a privilege to be able to work with other students now. Um, students who, you know, whether they're coming on, on just that very short-term customized and faculty-led program, or if they have a whole summer to spend with us, or a semester, or even an entire academic year, that I have the chance to play just even some tiny part in uh, what for them is potentially a life-changing experience and what is at the very least uh, something unique uh, that, that they could never have anywhere else. How can I best support students in their interests and in making the most of their time abroad? When I think about this question, I think about what a short time we ultimately have. We might just have a few weeks, we might have a few months, we might have a semester, at the most we have a year. Um, you know, each student who comes on one of our programs has a myriad of reasons why they're coming. Um, they have academic goals and personal goals and professional goals. Um, but you have, you you know, students are, are as various as, you know, the, uh, the number of enrollments of students you have. Um, but among them, you have some hearers and you have some listeners. Um, and the hearers might never become listeners and they might not be there to become listeners, um, but that's okay. Like we still have a responsibility to challenge them as much as possible, to listen as much as possible and open their ears and, and become listeners. That's okay and we need to do that for the entire time that they're there. Um, for the students who are listeners, um, you know, you just have a responsibility to throw everything in the kitchen sink at them. Um, and they might not always take that away, um, you know, in, in the ideal way that you might want them to as an educator. Um, or, you know, you can't even be sure that they're going to, you know, carry a message away and pass it on at all, even though that's what you would like them to do ultimately. Um, but you still have a responsibility to push and push and push and push. Um, because that's your job. Um, whether students are, are hearers or listeners, um, I think we have to approach our responsibilities from not from this cliched viewpoint, um, and there I go using that word cliche again, but it's something that education abroad tends to peddle in platitudes. You know, this idea that um, you are offering different viewpoints or creating new experiences. Um, that's nice, but you know, in the end, from, from its very foundations, we have to look at our role as, you know, 
knowledge. Um, the knowledge that all of these students um, are coming to you and to your site with um, is based on, on institutions um, and, and canons um, and, you know, very, very certain foundations. Even in that very, you know, we think of academia, that thing we all play a role in is very, being very liberal and being very progressive, but, you know, it's ultimately very colonized. And in this tiny amount of time that you have with students, um, this may be the only chance they have to start to chip away at that colonization of their knowledge and create something new.